Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're looking at the recently released Resident Evil 2 Remake and seeing how it compares both visually and from a gameplay perspective to its 1998 source material. Now before we get started, we're obviously going to see improvements visually in absolutely every field, but I did want to point out some of the interesting changes that have been made to the overall layout of the Raccoon City Police Department. Unlike other recent remakes like the Spyro and Crash Bandicoot collections, Resident Evil 2 isn't just a graphical overhaul. The way the game plays is entirely different, making it feel like an entirely brand new experience. But before we break down all the changes I've noticed so far, let's go ahead and look at how these graphics have evolved just for fun. Alright, so to kick this off, let's first look at our character and object models, starting with one of the lead characters, Leon Kennedy. So the first major change here is the massive bump in the complexity of the character geometry, with a far more complex overall character model, which is to be expected. But what I did find interesting is that they decided to stick with the design for Leon that they've been going with since Resident Evil 4, with a blonde comb over rather than giving him his old red-headed appearance. The uniform looks mostly the same, though Leon no longer sports his armored shoulder pads like he did in the original. Also, Leon originally used to hold his gun relaxed at his side while moving through the game, but Leon in the remake keeps his equipped gun at the ready. Also, another interesting change in the remake is Leon's clothing upon visiting the police station. Rather than already being geared up when arriving, Leon now arrives in more casual clothes, and only changes into his classic outfit after being saved by Marvin. It makes more sense and is a nice touch considering Leon hasn't actually started his job at the RPD yet. Next, let's look at the NPC enemies, mainly the zombies themselves. Because of the fixed camera positions, Capcom were able to get away with much lower detailed models with their terrifying zombie enemies back in 1998. Small details like bloodstains on the shirts and some minor variety between models and crowds were impressive features that were enough to make a convincing zombie. But fast forward 20 years and the standards are much higher, and having a bit of blood isn't enough to make the enemy scary. Zombies in Resident Evil 2 have an insane amount of detail, with things like the dead white eyes being fully rendered and visible to the player if they're unfortunate enough to get too close. The amount of gore in Resident Evil 2 back in 1998 was significant, with zombies falling apart at various points based on the type of weapon used. But this has also been improved tenfold, with bits and pieces of zombie character models being chipped away with small arms fire, and limbs exploding with enough damage. I also wanted to talk briefly about the animations. The animations for the characters and models in the original game were very rudimentary, and done entirely by hand. They still look impressive, all things considered, and it's very cool seeing different tiers of movement animations for Leon based on the amount of damage received. With the remake, character animations are now fully motion captured, and look incredibly realistic especially during the game's many cutscenes. While Leon still moves relatively slow, it looks much more natural, and the way zombies round corners and creep towards you is just as unsettling as it should be. Moving on, we have environmental textures, or rather, the environment itself. The original trilogy of games back in the late 90s utilized static background images, allowing for much more detailed environments than what a fully 3D rendered world at the time would realistically allow. Thanks to 20 years of graphical innovation, all these beautifully rendered images can now be fully appreciated in a 3D space, and things like the streets of Raccoon City now feel more alive than ever. Fans of the original game will appreciate the incredible attention to detail put into this remake, with several iconic environmental details returning, like the mailbox in the West Wing, the layout of the bullpens, and even the locations of infamous jump scares. However, many things have been altered in order to provide a much larger and fresh experience, but I'll get to that in a bit. Next, we have lighting. The original game didn't really have much in the way of direct lighting. Everything was pre-baked for each scene, and things like shadows were nothing more than a simple shaded circle below characters. The remake, however, makes perfect use of lighting to turn the already creepy police station from 98 into something truly horrifying. The hallways that were previously brightly lit are now pitch black, requiring the player to use a flashlight to find their way. It creates a much more threatening atmosphere that keeps the player guessing, especially considering that many lifeless corpses in these hallways will occasionally stand back up as the player returns later. Next up, we have special effects. Obviously, things like smoke and fire are going to look a million times better now, so there's no real sense in covering that, but I did want to note a few nice additions to the overall vibe of the game. First off, the remake takes place during a rainstorm, which helps add a nice level of atmosphere that wasn't in the original game. The howling wind and rain pouring in through the windows is a great touch, and adds to the horror tone. Another nice addition are the reflective surfaces, especially in some of the flooded corridors. While the reflections themselves could always be better, they still add a cool element to the game that just wasn't there before. And now, we get to the gameplay comparisons, and this is where it really gets interesting. 
Now there's an insane amount of changes that have been made here and I haven't yet completed the entire game as I've only just been given the code yesterday, so I'm just going to run through some of the changes I've already found in the first couple hours. Just a heads up, this section will likely contain a lot of spoilers. Alright, so right from the start, the biggest change here is the introductory cutscenes. Rather than starting right in the middle of Raccoon City surrounded by zombies, the new Resident Evil 2 starts off at a nearby gas station, which previously was only featured as the location where the truck driver was attacked by a zombie. It's here where the player is given control and told some basic controls as they investigate a disturbance inside. As Leon escapes from the gas station, a familiar scene from the original 98 intro sequence plays out, with Leon meeting Claire and shooting a zombie behind her. The scene originally happened near an alley in Raccoon City. Leon and Claire escape into a cop car just like they did in the original, but the way they are split up is slightly different. Once they arrive in the city, they reach a dead end and are ambushed by a horde of zombies, making it impossible to move the car. However, in the original game, they crash the cop car after a stowaway zombie in the back seat attacks them. In both games, a tanker truck crashes nearby and separates Leon and Claire's storyline, and this is where the actual gameplay would have begun in the original title. Now, another important note that I didn't really go into detail about before is that the original Resident Evil 2 features a fixed camera angle, meaning players could not change the direction of the camera as they played. Running off the screen would change to another preset camera angle, forcing players to only see what the developer wanted them to see. Rather than attempting a similar technique like they did with the Resident Evil 1 remake, Capcom decided that Resident Evil 2 would feature a full third-person over-the-shoulder camera just like Resident Evil 4 through 6, greatly changing the overall feel of the experience and arguably making the horror more personal and interesting. Another massive departure from the original game is the removal of the slow, door-opening loading screens. No longer restricted by memory, games can now have much larger environments requiring less loading from the system. Every room in the original game was separated by some form of doorway that the player would need to open and trigger a loading screen animation. Doors can now be fully walked through without halting the gameplay, and zombies, which originally had no way to travel between rooms, can now stack up on closed doors and push them open. This adds an entirely new level of fear to the gameplay experience, as you can't simply rely on hiding in the next room for comfort. As players navigate the streets of Raccoon City, dodging zombies and ducking into alleys, they will eventually come to the police station. Fans of the original game may be curious what happened to the gun shop that Leon visits. However, this shop is no longer part of Leon's storyline, but I do believe it's part of Claire's path now. After entering the Raccoon City Police Department, you'll notice a few significant changes. For one, the main lobby is filled with various objects like medical screens, boxes, trash, and various debris. It feels like the station was trying to hold off against the outbreak rather than its original appearance where the lobby looked completely untouched. The desk with the typewriter and computer has now been relocated to the front, which makes more sense considering it's supposed to be a reception desk, and the statue puzzle has been moved towards the back. Also, the storage container that was in the west hallway has also been moved to the front. The hallway doors on either side have also seen some changes. Previously, players would need to run into the west offices to speak to Marvin in order to acquire a blue key pass to use the computer. But in the remake, players can use the computer right away, which shows a cutscene where a fellow officer is calling for help in the east hallway. Players can now override the lock to the East Hall and crawl into a completely pitch black hallway that is also completely empty. The original game was brightly lit here and featured a massive horde of zombies that would crowd the hall. After grabbing a document from the officer in the East Hallway of the new game, zombies begin to flood that hallway, and the player is encouraged to escape back into the lobby, where they're now saved by Marvin. Marvin and every other character in the game now have much better vocal capture performances in addition to full motion capture. We get a real sense of Marvin's personality now, and it feels much more cinematic. After meeting with Marvin, the player is given a knife in order to open the manual override switch to open the west hallway door, so I guess he technically still helps you open at least one of these doors. The west hallway features another big change. While the layout is practically identical, one major character is no longer featured, at least not yet. The Licker, a terrifying enemy that would climb around on the ceiling, would previously climb past this window here and drop in front of the player in the next hallway. But the remake saves the scare for a little bit later instead, and keeps the player on their toes with some scary sound effects and ominous foreshadowing. After this point, the game's layout gets to be significantly different. Players will climb through open windows to get into separate hallways, complete a new puzzle involving a locker room and some missing keys, and fight zombies in a tall stairwell. All the original rooms are still around, like the Welcome Leon bullpen, and they all seem to perfectly match the classic design, only with a much darker and grittier tone. I could go on forever detailing all these changes, but I think you get the point. And if you want to see even more changes, just let me know in the comments section. While Resident Evil 2 is technically a remake of the original 98 game, it features so many changes that it'll keep even veteran players on their toes. 
Finally, let's listen to a few sound comparisons just so you get an idea of how much the sound quality has improved over the course of 20 years. Here, take this key card. You should be able to unlock the doors in the hall with this. Now go. But... Just go! No. You'll need this. I can't take it. Stop. Them. And don't make my mistake. If you see one of those things, uniform or not, you do not hesitate. And that just about wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. The Resident Evil 2 remake is a faithful recreation of the original game that not only introduces this harrowing experience to new and old audiences alike, but also mixes it up with some new puzzles, level layouts, and gameplay changes. But what do you guys think? Do you prefer the original design, or do you think Capcom successfully made a worthy successor to this classic? Let me know in the comments section, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this posted every week.